Welcome back to Machina Arcana, in this round playthrough, which we'll be performing mainly to show you how the four phases work. We'll be jumping right in, as we set up a two-player game in the last video. If you watched the previous video showing setup, you'll know that we are using Hank Horton and Blenda Warren, two bruisers as our explorers. First, we are prompted by the chapter card to place the entry token on the tile, which is placed on this direction symbol shown here. With that placed, we can go ahead and place our explorers, which can be placed either adjacent to or directly on top of the entry token. Hank will be placed one space east of the entry token, and will place Blenda one space south of him, both directly adjacent to the entry token. Just west of the entry token are a couple of spawning spaces, so our explorers will want to stay clear of those until they are all kitted up. Now the round officially begins with the explorer phase. In this phase, explorers will move throughout the map tile, activating spaces to gain essence and equipment, and may spend some time avoiding and possibly killing monsters. This chapter card does not have a specific goal, so in order to pass to the next chapter, our explorers will have to activate this chapter space, which happens to be surrounded by exploding barrels. Chapter spaces require 3 essence and 3 stamina to activate, so Hank and Blenda will spend the first rounds beefing up before attempting to activate it. Explorers take turns in any order they choose, so we'll have Hank go first. Hank spends two of his six stamina moving east, and ends adjacent to this event space. Event spaces require an expenditure of three stamina to activate, which Hank willingly gives up, leaving him with a single stamina left. First, Mr. Horton gains one essence for this activation, two more and he can head over to the chapter space. Second, activation of an event space invokes an explorer event, which prompts us to draw a single card from the explorer event deck. Glow of Competence Something resembling a lever protruded from the wall, and the recklessness that comes with survival decided that we would test our luck once more. Instantly upon activation, a glare blazed through the passage, and pleasant sensations of inner strength and competence filled our minds. This card has temporarily increased our explorer's attack rolls by a value of 1. Unfortunately, there are no monsters on the board yet, so this will have no effect. Hank will now spend his final stamina to move one space southeast in the vain hope of coming across better event cards. Time to use the Blenda. Miss Warren is, as of now, adjacent to a workbench, which costs three stamina to activate. Cautiously happy to do so, she decides it is in her favor, and this action leaves her with three stamina left. Operating the workbench allows the explorer to draw three item cards from one or many of the item decks. She will draw one card each from the Weapon Deck, Apparel Deck, and the Artifact Deck. The Prismatic Lens allows the explorers to target ethereal units on a round, which is not useful right now. The Music Box would allow her to restore her health using Stamina, or to restore the health of any target explorer with Essence. The Sturdy Targe is a shield, which allows for attacking and pushing, which could be useful with all these exploding barrels around. Additionally, when equipped, the shield increases armor by 1, and any melee attacks on her will be reduced by 1 as well. We'll go with the shield, and we can either discard the rest of the items, or place them back on top of their respective decks. We will discard the music box, but place the prismatic lens on top of the apparel deck, in case we encounter any ethereal monsters later on. Finally, the workbench allows the character to resolve the use inventory effect, so she'll now be able to equip the item to her personage. With her three remaining stamina, Blenda will move three diagonal spaces south and east. Now, we enter into the spawn phase, where each explorer rolls the d10 to see if they spawn a creature. Hank's roll is a 7, which is equal to the current spawn rating. As such, a monster is drawn from the deck. This little guy is the friendly river-dwelling Bwopoth, which will spawn in this northmost spawn space, which is closest to the explorers. He also has two health. Unfortunately, this shy guy has an enters play effect, which allows it to move up to two spaces right away. The Bopoth will move two spaces toward the closest explorer, ending one space south of the entry token. Now, Blenda rolls a d10, fortune on her side, and earns a 2, which is lower than the current spawn rating, so no monster is drawn. One is enough to deal with anyways. The spawn rating now decreases by 1, since no monster was spawned on this roll, which lowers the threshold for future spawns. Now, in horror, we move on to the horror phase. One of the explorers rolls the d10 to decide if a horror event is drawn, and they are cursed with a value 8. This is decidedly higher than the current horror rating of 4, so we invoke a horror event fact. First, we increase the monster threat by 1, then draw a card from the horror event deck. Broken item. 
These halls have an inexplicable way of imbuing the very air we breathe with pessimism, and it obstructs every step we take in here. Sometimes you need to lie back and allow the current to take you, but what if it only flows towards certain oblivion? This card's Enter's Play ability forces the players to destroy the top item card of each item deck, which means we'll be missing out on the prismatic lens that we placed before, as well as some other neat items. Finally, the monster phase has arrived. There is only a single monster in our queue, our cute little Bwopoth. The monster must first decide a target. In this case, both explorers are equal spaces away and have equal health. We'll choose our little friend to target Blenda, since she has her handy dandy shield. The monster moves three diagonal spaces, ending adjacent to the awaiting Blenda. This movement consumed three of its five stamina, and it will use the remaining two to perform its attack. One of each color of dice are rolled, and the monster scores a value three. Blenda's shield effectively reduces this melee attack to a value two. Plus, she has four armor, three from her explorer card, and one from her equipped shield, so she escapes the monster's fury without injury. The monster's turn is over, and the new explorer phase would begin. So, this concludes our playthrough of the first round. Thanks for watching this video on Machina Arcana.